Hey guys, I am Ken Ross here. I'm a business consultant that specializes in reducing costs for businesses by looking at their essential expenses. And today, as you can see, I'm at the local Starbucks here, getting ready to meet with a good friend of mine. His name is Emmanuel Blakemore, and we're gonna continue this Financial Times series. So, well you. guys, here's Emmanuel. Like I said, this is my friend here. It says here, on your card. Yes. Mortgage advisor. Tell me a little bit about your background, how you got to be a mortgage advisor, what, what, you know, your education and things. For sure. So I went to Stetson University up in Deland, Florida, right by Orlando, Florida. I uh, played football there, Division One football for uh, Stetson. They brought back their Division One team in 2013. So it was actually a new, fresh program. Got to help build up that program and, you know, meet a lot of nice people at Stetson. And then uh, after graduating, from Stetson I wanted to go into some type of business field with my business degree okay. and um, I felt like finance was a great field and I felt like mortgages was a great opportunity especially the fi the way the financial market was when I was graduating yeah and the housing market yeah. even more you know it was a great opportunity so I Absolutely. got an interview um, in a company in Miami in Brickell it was in the Brickell Arch so oh, wow okay I, yeah. I, I came down and in the middle of my senior year, I drove down to Miami for the interview. After doing the phone interview, you know, uh, brought my girlfriend along. We stayed in a hotel. I was able to actually ace that interview. Nice. Um, it was Great. A couple rounds, and then you know they gave me the call when I came back uh, up to the land and said, "Yeah, you got you have the position." I accepted the position and. Uh, I graduated, came down to Miami, worked at Brickle, uh, the Brickle Arch for a while, and went through a couple things with that company, and, you know, I left that company, went and got my license, finally, and uh, went to a brokerage where I'm still currently working, uh, I've been working with the same uh, branch, but um, we, we've transferred to a bank now, uh, okay. to Pacific Mortgage, you know, powered by preferred, uh, powered by preferred rate. <laughs> I know a little bit about Brickle. I've actually done some work on some other channels too. Um, Brickle is quite a big area for business. A lot of banks there. What sets you apart from your competition in, in, in yeah, this, so, this space? Um, big thing, I mean, especially with me, is how I like to treat my clients. A lot of the times it's churn in, churn out with these uh, bigger you know, banks. But we're a top 10 lender and I like to sit down and be an advisor, right? Like my card says, it's a mortgage advisor. Yes. I'm not a mortgage salesman. I'm not a, a mortgage. <laughs> Mortgage and a door-to-door -door guy. Yeah. I'm a guy that wants to advise you on how to create the successful roadmap to your dream of home ownership. Right. And that is the key to getting relationship business, referral business. A lot of people purchase a lot of leads. They're going out and they're purchasing a lot of advertisement and advertising, Facebook marketing, stuff like that. Right. I don't spend anything on that. Really? What I do is I create relationships with guys like yourself, realtors, <laughs> uh, you know, professionals cool. in the industry do well by them them, help them build their business and they help me in return, you know, mm -hmm. as well as helping my clients. They also refer me a lot of business as well, because when you do well by them, when you save them money, they want the same treatment for their loved ones and their friends. That's, that's a really good segue, honestly, because you said when you save them money, I love to save money. I really do. So I can't resist asking you this question about this review I saw, and I'm going to make sure I, I get it right. So I, I saw it on here. Um, I read it, it says, Clint. Clear, clear to close in 11 business days with over $27,000 in savings and nearly a full percent better on the rate. How are you able to find these kind of savings? This is something that I feel like my audience, given that I'm a cost reduction guy, yeah. is something that they'll want to know. For sure, for sure. That was actually a funny uh, funny loan. That was, uh, it came from Bank of America. Bank of America, they couldn't do it. They were trying to give him a very high rate with a very high closing cost. Um, he was also going with a cross-country mortgage for a while, really? and they couldn't do it to his satisfaction. So uh, my realtor was actually the listing agent on that property, okay. not the buyer's agent. But she got and convinced the realtor that was the buyer's agent to give their client to me because she knew that I can handle those those clients, I can handle those deals, and she knew I could get it closed. So that's another you know example of how creating a relationship with that realtor, that referral partner brings me business. You know, I didn't know that buyer's agent. I didn't know that client. What we had to do is uh, renegotiate the contract, which a lot of loan officers don't know how to do. They might know how to do finance. They might not do and type in loans, 
but negotiating the contract is the first part. Now it's the agent's job, but it's also you in the background knowing how the numbers work and how to get the deal done, coaching them on how to get the the right concessions, how to get the right down payment, you know, the right loan type for that client, and that leads to a, a lot of uh, savings for them. Yes. It leads to a, you know, 20k in savings. We went back, renegotiated the contract. I, I added a couple addendums to there that uh, both parties agreed to, okay. and uh, we we restructured his, his his loan. So we were able to save him 20k in, in closing costs. We were able to reduce his rate by almost a percentage. Yes. You know, and you know we we caught that loan. You know, really in the middle of things. So it was like we only had. Uh, I think a 20 day window. So I said, you know what, I don't even need the 20 days. Let's close it in 11. Not only did you save money, but you saved time. And clearly that's something for the average consumer. For somebody like myself, if I tried to do what you did, it would take me much longer. I probably wouldn't find as much in savings. And I certainly wouldn't be as happy as I'm sure your client was in this in this particular instance, because yeah. you navigated them through this whole process. De definitely, you know, if you go out and you do something by yourself and you're not with a trusted advisor, um, um, it's hard, first of all, to even get financing without getting someone to right. okay that loan, right? You don't want to just go straight to an underwriter or go to a hard money guy that's just going to throw you a loan. But you don't know how the system works. You don't know that every few months, Fannie and Freddie are coming out with new laws, new regulations, new ways that they're uh, scoring you, new loan level price adjustments. We just had a new loan level price adjustment come out this month where, uh, you know, I'm sure you've heard about it where they're, they're saying, you know, mm -hmm. higher credit scores are getting penalized. Right, right. Which everybody, is totally everybody, yeah, everybody has taken that, excuse me, as this welfare type of program. These things have existed you know in the market already it's just exactly. adjustments right exactly it's just adjustments it's just changes but you have to have someone in the industry that's knowledgeable about the industry to make sure that they you know to prepare for those changes to prepare for the different things that are being um, talked about within the Fannie and Freddie regulations within even non QM regulations so that way you're getting the best mortgage product because every loan has to be tailored to that client not every loan is for everybody right there's a three year to five year window where typically you hold the loan no one really holds it for 30 years and you have to plan for that three to five years for that client for their family for what they want they see the future of that property being so you got to have something someone and somebody that has the resources to get those special loan products and someone that's going to be able to teach you and explain them to you in a way that you understand so that way you don't feel like you're in a limbo when going through the loan process. Could be a lot of sleepless nights uh, if, if, uh, if you yeah. don't do it right. It's a so. stressful process, man. Okay. I, I, I never knock anybody for getting stressed out within the process. I 100% <laughs> get it. Sometimes it's the biggest purchase of their life. Absolutely. Uh, of course, you want everything to be simple for you so that way you can feel safe and secure and that you're making the right decision. Kind of last question here, what, what would you say is kind of the state of lending right now? Because if you look at what I do, I work with a lot of business owners. A lot of business owners have properties. They leverage those properties. It's, it's important that banks are in, in good spots and uh, lending as far as being able to buy a home or even float a loan for, for certain things is important. So what, what would you say are some of the highlights of the state of lending right now? Um, see, it really depends on you know what you're lending on. Uh, when it comes to residential real property, it's a little bit easier to get funding because we're talking about property that a lot of people are going to be living in. Mm -hmm. So it's a safe investment for banks. Right. So you're not going anywhere. If you live there, we know where you are. And if you aren't going to pay us, we're going to foreclose on the property. So they're like, <laughs> yeah. hey, it doesn't matter. Either way, I win. Yeah. <laughs> but... Um, when it comes to investment property, things are getting tighter, especially with construction projects, you know, because a lot of them are, uh, banks are seeing that as a risky uh, More business, of a risk? Right? Okay. Yeah, it's definitely more of a risk because you have a lot more stuff that has to go in. You got permitting, you got zoning, you got the build, you got the scope of work, you got to make sure the GC is on time with everything so that way you fit into that construction loan term. There's a lot of stuff that goes into that on top of the fact you got to make sure that you're coming out with the right ARV after construction 
construction, all of that is in limbo until the property is done completed and rented out or sold. And that's with the exit for the loan. So um, especially investment property, more so commercial property is getting hit very hard right now. Mm -hmm. uh, lending is very tight right now. Commercial property is based off the NOI, the net operating income, and the way that rates are right now. You know, um, invest, uh, commercial properties is based off the prime rates, very high right now, I think it's about 8%. So when you're putting a margin on that, it's just throwing off the numbers with the NOI and the income of the property, which makes it uh, not as apt advertising to a lot of lenders. Okay. Now, of course, the big banks and the big relationships, they're going to keep getting their money. They're going to keep right. doing business. Blackstone, all of them, they're going to buy <laughs> as many properties as they want. Right, but you, usually we're not talking to those types of people. That's <laughs> exactly. that's why that's why I'm talking to you, right? So Exactly, man. We're not talking to those types. So, you know, credit unions, those smaller, mid-sized, the small banks, they're hurting right now because okay. they're, they're, they, they have to keep their pockets tight so they don't run into defaults like we saw over the weekend. Right. You you know, that's something that we don't want to see again and that a bank doesn't want to see for their shareholders. So it makes sense that they don't want to put too much money out if they're not sure about the money that they're holding internally and the notes that they're holding internally. People are shying away from buying homes. Is that also causing a lot of stress? Because, you know, you see people, they don't really want to buy a new home unless they really have to, right? They don't want to move if we have to, if we don't have to. Right, right. Does that, does that affect uh, the affect lending? lending? Yeah, right now? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it affects lending as far as the competition. Okay. As demand isn't as high as it previously was. Okay. So you have a lot more competition with, within a group of lenders, right? So now banks uh, are competing with brokers, they're competing with the credit unions, which are competing with the big depository institutions. Everyone wants a slice of a very, you know, small pie. So it's, you know, real... Uh, real tight right now with people that uh, are getting loans, they're getting, you know, undercut, or the people that are doing loans, they're getting undercut by the next guys just so that they can originate loans. So some people, um, you know, right now are making money off the loans they originate. Some some people, you know, some banks, I, I should say, aren't making any type of money off. They're actually losing money for the loans they originate. Right, I think you mentioned this when we were getting coffee here. Um, there's some banks that are giving people money just to close, right? Just to close, just to close, you know. <laughs> That's, that That's instead crazy. of, uh, you know, we do good business, we get you the best loan possible, you should do business with us. It's, oh, we'll give you $3,000 or we'll give $5,000. Please work with us. Right. You know? We'll just make it up in the end, right? So, yeah, but know. they don't. They don't. The average a lender right now is losing $350 plus on, on the loans they originate. Wow. Prior to this year, they were making about twenty five to 2600 off each loan that they originating. Really? Okay. So... It, that's why a lot of uh, independent mortgage companies and independent mortgage banks are losing money at every quarter. Uh, Q4 of last year, almost all of the independent mortgage banks were losing money. Okay. You know, everybody's operating in the red and just trying to get by. So it really, uh, it's really pushing people and pushing lenders to to give a, a lot. They're bleeding themselves just to get by and get to the next quarter right now. Okay. Well. I've, I've really had a great time here asking you some questions. Where can we find you uh, if people want to reach out to you? My socials are Emmanuel Blakemore underscore, you know, first name, last name, no periods or anything like that. Okay. Um, you can check me out on my website, uh, www.blakemoremortgages.com. Okay. Um, you know, if you, if you need to reach out to me directly, my number is 717-829-8308. And, you know, if you know anybody that's looking to buy, sell, refinance, you know, it, the consultations are free. Talk to a professional. <laughs> talk to someone that is knowledgeable about the industry. Don't talk to your uncle that bought a house in the 90s right. or, you, you know, your, your great aunt that swore she did real estate 10 years ago and knows what's going on in the market now. Yeah. Right. Well, and it's it's important that people realize this, right? And I, I've tried, tried to train my audience or I tried to at least explain to my audience, having good partners that are understanding of a market where you could ask them a question, like we could sit down here and have a coffee and you tell me about right. uh, what it is, you know, what it is that you do and, and, and the state of lending, that's something that you can't replace. You can't just find that on 
the internet somewhere. You can't just ask your uncle who's not in the industry, like you were saying, and uh, and get the right answer or get a clearer picture of it. And so that's that's why I do this. Thank you for inviting me and being a part of it. Well, I know you're gonna grow to. I, hey, well, I'm, I'm doing I'm, I'm doing my part, right? I'm doing my part. <laughs> you, you can say what you want, but I, I don't I don't I don't uh, I don't claim to to have any other knowledge other than a, than a desire and a passion to want to see uh, good people excel in what they do. And, and that's something that I see in you and in all the people that I'm out to serve too. So I want to I be, be a, a sharer rather than a taker, right? In some sense. <laughs> Love it. That's the way to succeed, man. Love okay. it. Thank you. Well, this has been uh, Financial Times, right? I feel yeah. like financial services is important, something that all people need to be a part of. And I will continue the series on my channel with more people like Emmanuel. And uh, thank you for your time today. Thank you as well, Ken. Can't wait for the next one. All right. Appreciate <laughs>